Landing simulations of the Lockheed Delta Body Orbiter are being flown by NASA pilots at Lockheed's Rye Canyon facility in California. The fixed base, six degree of freedom simulator, is programmed to allow the pilot to maneuver from an altitude of 100,000 feet to touchdown. A basic objective of the simulation is to evaluate simplified unpowered orbiter energy management techniques utilizing conventional TACAN and ILS displays. The cockpit instruments are of conventional airplane design and provide the pilot with attitude, equivalent airspeed, altitude, and altitude rate information. TACAN indicators present heading to the selected TACAN station and range to go. An ILS display provides localizer and glide slope steering information. Pitch and roll commands are made by the pilot through a two-axis hand controller in a rate command control mode. Pedals are used for yaw axis inputs. The energy management technique used is illustrated in this figure. The primary objective is to maximize the conservation of potential energy, but also fly the final approach with sufficient kinetic energy to allow a precise flare and landing. The initial conditions of the simulation place the vehicle at 100,000 feet altitude at random headings and distances from the airfield. Representative wind profiles are also programmed. The procedure requires that the pilot immediately initiate a 45 degree bank turn to intersect a 13.5 nautical mile radius energy dissipation cylinder. This cylinder is centered on a TACAN station located eight miles uprange of the landing runway. The vehicle is flown at the indicated airspeed for maximum lift to drag ratio, about 170 knots, until the energy dissipation cylinder is attained. Upon interception of the cylinder, a 20 degree bank is accomplished to maintain the vehicle on the cylinder. The airspeed is increased to 200 knots to provide a nominal lift to drag ratio on the front side of the lift to drag curve. At 36,000 feet altitude, a 45 degree bank turn towards the TACAN station is made. A 10 to 20 degree offset between the vehicle and station headings is allowed to provide for the turn onto the final approach. The ILS 15.8 degree glide path and localizer are intercepted in a 30 degree bank turn at 12 to 14,000 feet altitude. The final approach is nominally flown at 240 knots and the flare maneuver is initiated at 800 feet altitude. Touchdown is at 180 knots, 2,000 feet from the runway threshold. All runs were started at 100,000 feet altitude and a Mach number of 2.8. The principal instruments of the display panel are located as follows. A three-axis attitude indicator is centered at the top of the panel. The ILS localizer and glide slope display is positioned beneath it. The TACAN range to go indicator is located directly below the ILS display and a conventional TACAN heading indicator is positioned at the bottom center of the panel. Barometric altitude, radar altitude, and rate of climb information is presented to the pilot on conventional indicators in the right of center portion of the display panel. Angle of attack, airspeed, and inertial velocity indicators are placed in the left of center location. For this simulation, the altimeter sensitivity was reduced by a factor of 10. One sweep of the large pointer thus corresponds to an altitude change of 10,000 feet and one rotation of the small pointer, 100,000 feet. In this demonstration, the TACAN heading and distance displays show an initial heading to the station of 255 degrees and a distance of 48 nautical miles. The pilot turns to intersect tangentially the 13.5 nautical mile radius energy dissipation cylinder. The required heading is established by flying a 20 degree offset from the station heading at 40 miles range and 30 degrees at 27 miles range.
The indicated airspeed is that required for a maximum value of lift to drag ratio for the delta body orbiter, approximately 170 knots at an angle of attack of 17 degrees. The maximum no wind glide range of this vehicle is about 95 nautical miles at 100,000 feet altitude. On this trajectory, the vehicle transitions to subsonic Mach numbers at approximately 61,000 feet. A turn on to the energy dissipation cylinder is initiated as the tachan needle approaches the wingtip position. A bank angle of 12 to 15 degrees is required to maintain a constant radius from the station. This type of DME radius turn is a standard IFR procedure used in aircraft practice. The airspeed is increased to approximately 200 knots to achieve a speed-stable condition on the front side of the L over D curve. The bank angle is varied during this period in order to offset wind drift and to adjust the radius vector to precisely 13.5 nautical miles. For shuttle configuration and range of initial positions chosen, the vehicle remains on the energy dissipation cylinder through a maximum of only 240 degrees of turn. Upon reaching an altitude of 36,000 feet, a 45 degree bank turn is initiated to place the vehicle on an inbound heading to the Tacan station. A slight offset between the vehicle and station headings is allowed to provide for the turn onto the due north final approach heading. The vehicle lift to drag ratio is varied by the pilot through airspeed and speed brake modulation to adjust for the effects of unknown winds and resulting glide path perturbations. At this point, the pilot can also manage his energy by varying the turn in distance from the Tacan station. The final turn is normally begun approximately two and one half miles from the station. The final approach heading and the ILS localizer are intersected in a 30 degree bank turn at an altitude of 14,000 feet. The flight path is adjusted by the pilot as necessary to capture and maintain the 15.8 degree ILS glide slope. The nominal final approach indicated airspeed is 240 knots. In this case, the pilot is above the glide path and thus increases his airspeed to increase the vehicle glide path angle.
A black and white visual presentation of the outside landing scene is presented to the pilot on a large television screen. The image is obtained from a 6,000 to 1 scale moving belt model. The landing flare maneuver is initiated visually approximately 800 feet above runway elevation and 3,700 feet upwind of the intended landing point. Normal touchdown is at 180 knots, 2,000 feet down the runway at an angle of attack of 14 degrees. To date, a total of seven NASA pilots from the manned spacecraft, Ames, and flight research centers have flown in excess of 100 landings in this simulation. The results indicate that satisfactory unpowered orbiter landings from random initial conditions and with unknown winds can be accomplished utilizing conventional TACAN and ILS information for energy management. These results, in combination with other required studies and manned simulations, will assist in demonstrating the feasibility of complete piloted orbiter re-entry.